What we talk a lot about is the holy grail to find out what is the best fuel. There are many fuel feedstocks that are now entering both the transportation and the stationary sectors. So we hear a lot about the Canadian tar sands. You'll hear a lot in the news about bringing fracking fuels into the uh, power sectors. The catch is, is that if they don't perform as well as or better than the fuels we already have, you can have a net increase in the carbon emissions associated with these fuels. So we have to be careful and understand what their properties are. I like to compare this to may the cure be not worse than the disease. So the molecular structure of biodiesel is fundamentally different than from fossil fuel diesel or from gasoline. But the good news is we've developed the tools to understand that chemistry for gasoline and diesel fuel. So we can apply very similar tools and try and understand the role of those double bonds in these oxygenated biodiesel compounds. Today we're going to be working with hexene. We're also going to be putting in oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide so that we can control the temperature of the experiment. When we mix these gases, we rely on pressure measurements. Gases under assembly, you can't really like pour them into a cup and then, you know, like dish them out like you would if you were cooking or something. So pressure is really our big measuring stick, so to speak. Gee, they're kind of boring experiments to film. Boring of pumps and then a big bang. <laughs> and it takes place at a period of like, uh, you know, a second. Essentially, you can think of it as a cannon, um, but it's a gas gun. So when he runs an experiment, what he does is he fires this valve that launches the sabot down the length of the test section there, and then it bangs into that. Makes a little bit of noise. I mean, most of what we do makes noise. You might, with your own eye, catch a little bit of vibration that happens. The fuel will start to oxidize, it'll start to burn, and we're able to apply other diagnostics like high-speed imaging, gas chromatography, laser absorption techniques. Uh, to better understand chemical kinetics, what's the chemistry that's taking place as we burn our fuels. If we're able to understand the chemistry, we're better able to design more efficient and cleaner burning engines uh, for the future. It's challenging. It's really hard. I mean, I wish I could say there was one clear right answer for any of it, but there isn't. But some are more attractive than others, and some are being underutilized. A good example is ethanol. I love ethanol as a fuel because of its intrinsic characteristics. But a smarter, better question to do is back up and say, what would be the ideal fuel for the engine technologies that we have today? And that may not even be the best question to ask. Maybe the best question is clean slate. What can I do with the engine? What can I do with the fuel together to build the best system? So by attaching those sensors to the body segments, uh, like a foot, uh, the torso, we can see exactly where those body segments are moving in space. Coming over. The whole point of this project is